intimate knowledge of the medical and paramedical staff. It is a job which requires extensive facilities of physical plant and equipment. Perhaps most of all, the rehabilitation process requires a team of specialists working together to bring their individual patient, being done by one of the nation's oldest privately endowed specialty hospitals. This is Gaylord today. Incoming patients at Gaylord Hospital today may suffer from arthritis, multiple sclerosis, or from the effects of a stroke or paralyzing accident. Admission is by referral from physicians throughout the state. A complete medical study will be made by staff physicians, aided when necessary by a staff of consultants. Frequently this will involve x-rays, which are an indispensable clinical and diagnostic tool. A well-equipped and expertly staffed x-ray department can often be of help to the medical staff in its diagnosis and treatment of many different medical problems. Often an incoming patient's condition requires the services of the hospital laboratory. Here too, technicians work closely with the medical staff, employing a variety of important testing procedures. In the days to come, following this initial examination, the newly arrived patient will be further examined and tested to establish procedures for rehabilitation. Here in this clinical session, in this meeting of the specialists who make up the medical and paramedical team, is the heart of the rehabilitation process. Each patient's case is individually discussed by the entire group. The director of general medicine is primarily concerned with the patient's overall medical care. His counterpart, the director of physical medicine, is primarily charged with the treatment of those illnesses and disabilities which affect the muscles and joints. He is responsible for overall rehabilitation procedures. His administrative assistant, an expert in rehabilitation, often begins the discussions, which may involve a nursing problem, for instance, requiring the judgment of the director of nursing or nurse. The head of the physical therapy department is in close touch with many patients and is often able to provide the group with insights on a patient's progress. The same is true for those in work and occupational therapy. The full-time social worker can often be of great help to a patient and his family, both at the hospital and at home. Where necessary, a psychiatrist is also present. But let's look now at the patients and staff actually performing the job of rehabilitation. The hospital gymnasium is the center of the physical therapy department. Here, patients with a variety of disabling conditions work every day at the job of improving their physical capacity. A multiple sclerosis victim practices a balancing exercise. A paraplegic, that is one who has lost muscular control in the lower part of his body and legs, often must work to strengthen his arms and shoulders. This can help him in a variety of ways. Climbing a staircase, for instance, is hard work when it must be accomplished by arm power alone. An experienced therapist, constant practice, and the will to succeed are at a premium here. For patients with lung conditions like emphysema or chronic bronchitis, special equipment is available. 
that is used as an important adjunct to therapeutic breathing exercises. Hydrotherapy has many uses at Gaylord. For this patient with rheumatoid arthritis, the warm water relieves pain, while the leg and arm joints receive necessary flexing exercises. The tank is also used in cases of muscular disability. The water, by overcoming the effects of gravity, assists the therapist in her work of strengthening affected muscles. However, physical therapy is rarely restricted to a single type of treatment. Here, for example, a therapist gives the patient further exercises on a powder board. As in all physical therapy, rapport between the patient and the therapist is at the heart of successful treatment. The patient's condition may require the use of electronic equipment like this machine, which tests the electrical conductivity of nerve fibers. The machine is used both for diagnostic purposes and for periodic testing. This young woman, like all patients at Gaylord, is receiving the best that modern medicine and therapy can provide. Occupational therapy has several specific purposes, one of which is helping disabled patients perform the everyday activities which will be necessary when they return home. Simple tasks, to which the ordinary housewife gives no thought, must be carefully planned and practiced when they have to be performed from a wheelchair. Assistive devices like this counterbalanced self-feeder can sometimes spell the difference between complete incapacity and progress towards self-sufficiency. Weakened muscles sometimes need help to perform the very exercises which are necessary to strengthen them. The encouragement of an attractive therapist can also be of help. A specially designed typewriter mount is indispensable to the ambitions of this boy. Fingers incapacitated by childhood arthritis are unable to hold a pencil. They can, however, work typewriter keys, allowing him to progress toward his goal, college admission. Sometimes, because of a disability sustained through illness or accident, a patient is no longer able to carry on his former occupation. When this occurs, the selection of a new occupational goal and the learning of new skills will be an important part of the patient's rehabilitation. Often this will involve aptitude testing to establish his potential. Simple tests for manual dexterity and coordination, for instance, may be indicated for a patient whose disability no longer allows him to perform the heavy work to which he is accustomed. A therapist trained in pre-vocational testing will watch his performance closely, for the results of these and other tests can be of real importance to the patient in the selection of a realistic employment goal. The patient's motivation and abilities may indicate job retraining for machine work, so a rehabilitation facility must have the personnel and equipment available to undertake the necessary training. The adjoining wood shop is used for both vocational and recreational purposes. Here, an experienced woodworker who makes articles of commercial quality learns how to practice his trade within the limitations imposed by his disability. Other patients at Gaylord suffer from problems of communication, either in hearing or in speech. An audiometer is an important testing device for establishing the degree of hearing impairment for some patients, and to identify others whose problem is solely one of expression. Aphasia, or the loss of the ability to speak, read and write, or do simple problems of calculation, 
is frequently associated with cerebral hemorrhage or stroke. Sure. Therapy is often taxing and difficult for the patient. Cup. Good. Fork. Schwara. Fine, now let's, let's tie this in with a phrase now. We'll have, let's just do it with this one first. Put on. Tie. Now let's put, now let me hear you put it together. Hard, hard, tie. Short. Let's have the whole phrase. Put on. Short. Good, now you say it. For the church. Patients can practice word recognition and articulation with the aid of this self-help machine. A word, pictured and printed on the card, is also recorded on a magnetic strip at the bottom. The patient reads the word, says it, and then listens to the tape, correcting himself afterward if necessary. Patients and the speech therapist often work together with a tape recorder. The therapist keeps earlier tapes to play back to the patient so he can hear his own progress. This patient is about to hear a recording made shortly after his stroke. Now the therapist will play a recording made of the patient reading the same text about six weeks later. Nice. They seldom.